Hello guys, one of the best ways to learn programming is to take a look at the source code of existing projects. So this is exactly what we will do in this video. We will take a look at the official filament demo, which you can find on the homepage of filamentphp.com. This says visit the demo and source code is available on GitHub in full. So with that demo, the filament team was trying to demonstrate various capabilities and functions of filament. And one of the interesting pages is order form that looks like this. There are quite a few things we can learn from here about form components, their positioning and various small details. And also at the end of this video, I'll show you a pull request, which is currently on GitHub at the time of shooting this video to prevent new order form from looking like this. So editing of the order looks great, but creating the order, not so great. Anyway, let's dive into the source code of this page. I've cloned down the demo and you can do it yourself. As I said, it's public on GitHub and in the order form, in the schema, in the configure. Let's take a look inside and just try to dissect what can we learn, what are the interesting things here. First, I want to talk about sections and group. So basically dividing the form into sections. Well, section is a bordered thing here. So this is a section, this one is a section, and then this one order items is a section and so on. So that bordered thing is a section and then group make is just a way for combining a few components, a few sections in this case with the same one setting like for example, column span. So in this case, as you can see, column span is two because we have the order is not null. And then we have a section with column span large one. And in total, we have three columns. This is how the form is divided. So this is large column span two, and then column span one for the right sidebar. And as an example, let's try to make some changes so you would see what numbers are actually affecting what. So let's change that to four columns and refresh the page. Then the fourth column appears, which is empty, but we can do something differently. So in the column span here, we can change that to three or full four, for example, then this part becomes bigger and the sidebar becomes one fourth of the page. This is actually the second best way to learn programming is to try to change the source code and see what it affects. So you would understand the functions and the parameters better. Let's move on. Next, I want to show you what to do, what you can do if you have form with a lot of components, a lot of inputs. So you can create a function inside of the same class of order form and then put that function inside of schema to section or to some group or to something. So in this case, we have static get details components, which represents this big form. But instead of listing all the inputs here in line, which would make vertically huge method, we have separately get details components. Then let's take a look inside and see what interesting things we can find here. So for example, did you know about create option form? So in the customer drop down here in the select, there is a plus sign where you can create a customer on the fly. So if I fill in the form and click create customer, this becomes the value here. And in the customers, we probably can see that John, if we try to find the name and scroll down, yeah, we see that John in the customer table. So it immediately creates the record and assigns to the drop down value. And also that model form is somewhat customizable with these parameters. So again, if we click here, the button, the label title is coming from here as well as width of that model. So if you, for example, comment that one out, and if we click plus now, by default, the model is wider. Okay, let's take a look next toggle buttons. What are those? Those are here. I'm pretty sure some of you don't know that component, but it looks pretty cool. So in the official documentation toggle buttons, it looks like this. You have buttons with options and you may customize them quite a lot with colors and icons. And also if you search for toggle buttons in the documentation, there's enum tricks where you can use enums. This is not only for toggle buttons, but in the enum, if you define get icon, there's also get color and get label. You can use that enum as options. And inside of that enum, we have what label should there be, what color should there be, and what icon. And as a result, we have, as you saw, colorful and with icons and with label, pretty cool component, toggle buttons. 
Okay, let's move on. Currency is pretty standard. Address form also standard. Rich editor for notes. This is how it looks like. So this part is pretty standard. Though, wait a minute. Those three address fields, they are not typical inputs. Of course, I missed this one. Address form, what that is. This is a custom field. So you can define your own app forms components in this case. Address form, which extends the field from components from filament forms. And then inside, the main thing is probably this one. Yeah, this one. This one above the schema. In fact, it's not just three. I totally missed that. This whole thing is address form. So country, address, and those three, city, state, and postcode. So this is a form within a form. So this is another thing how we can offload some of the inputs, not only to the methods of the same form, but also totally separate. So in here you have inputs, you have grid inside of the same section. So for example, here we have two columns by default in that form, but inside of that form, you may change that to do grid make three like this. And then when you call that address form, you have column span full, which means full width. And then inside, you can do kind of repositioning by three in this case. Okay, now we get back to configure. So this was the get details components. Now what's next is get items repeater, another function inside of the same form, get items repeater, which is down below this one. And this is a repeater component, pretty typical, but also it's pretty complex to explain much here. It has a table with three columns and also with schema, you select the product, then quantity and unit price. And as you can see, after state updated with product, for example, you choose the product and then it probably changes the price. Yeah, indeed, the unit price is changed automatically and it is disabled, so it is changed only when you change the product. Also in the same repeater down below, we have extra item actions. So this one represents the icon, which is this here, open product. So what happens when you click here, a new tab with product form, which is also actually interesting candidate to dissect in some future videos. But let's focus on the current form. This already becomes a pretty long video, to be honest. So yeah, this is the repeater here. And again, we get back to the main form recap, we have the function here and then the function here for the repeater. And in the section make we have text entry, which is interesting, actually, this is an example possible in filament four. in the same form, you can have edit form and info list. So previously in filament three info list components like text entry were usually used on the view page show page of the record, but not in the edit. It was possible to combine in kind of hacky way, but in filament four, this becomes possible with the syntax because that text entry component here on top, as you can see, we have components from info list and from forms and from schemas as well. This is now part of the unified thing called schema, which may have components from both forms and info lists. And finally, on this page of order form, we have payments here, but this is not in the form, not in the order form, but this is actually in the order resource. It's just a relation manager for payments. So nothing really too fancy here, but we can take a look inside components, text inputs, again, toggle buttons here, as you can see, Stripe, PayPal and methods. So this is for the form. So if we go to new payment, these are toggle buttons here. And then in the table, what interesting we have here, oh, column group, not sure if you're aware, remember in Microsoft Excel or in Google Sheets or whatever you use, you have a feature called merge cells. This is what I've been doing in many Excel sheets I've created in the university and long time ago. But anyway, this is exactly that you can have a column group with label of details, for example, and then inside you have a few columns. So kind of additional header on top. So column group here. And yeah, I guess that's it. This is how many small tips and details we can learn from dissecting just one form the source code of official demo. So I advise you to take a look at the demo in general, the full source code is as I said on GitHub, which also includes the ability to submit a pull request. And this is what I promised in the beginning of this video, one of the pull requests, 
by Muhammad. He's suggesting and I'm approving with my comments to change the columns to be dynamic. Let's take a look and see what would be the actual change. So in our order form, by default, we have columns three. We actually change that to four. So let's revert back to how it was. And now let's change column three to this option. And now if we do have the record in the edit form, we would have three columns, otherwise one column. What does it change? So if we refresh edit form, nothing really changes in terms of positioning the elements. But if we go to orders and click new order, now the order is in full width because we have one column specified here. And by the way, final thing I noticed, have you noticed the steps here? one and two. So this happens only in the create of the order. So in the get pages, we have create order. And in that specific page, there's get steps. So it doesn't exist in the edit form, but it does exist in the create form. And here's another reason why you can offload some parts of the form in the methods because you can reuse them elsewhere. So this is the same get details components, which we saw already in the beginning of this video, just reused on the create order page with steps to represent that header on top. So yeah, that's it for this video. Anything new you have learned in particular from this demo or what parts do you want me to dive deeper into or explain more from filament demo in the future videos? Let's discuss all of that in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.